Good morning, everyone. I'm Vince Lancey. Gold's on all-time highs as we speak, and this is the morning market rundown. Today, we cover a lot of ground in short, concise order. There are new all-time highs in gold, which we have to discuss, as well as the relationship with silver. We have Trumponomics, which are largely responsible for yesterday's catalytic type of move in the U.S., and I want to touch on stock behavior for a second. Your Indian demand curve will wait another day when I have the whole report ready for everyone. Okay, let's look at the markets first. The dollar is down 49 at 103.74 after being unchanged yesterday. 10-year yields are 417, up one after being down significantly yesterday. The S&P 500 is down 58. That's 5606. The VIX is trading 1404. Gold is 24.70, up $2. It was, it's on the lows right now, still up $2. It was a lot higher this night. You can see the uh, chart. Silver is 31.02, down 23 cents or 74 basis points. Copper is 4.44, down about a penny and a half. Oil is up 32 cents. Natural gas is 2.16. Oil is 81.19, by the way. Bitcoin Things have changed in the last hour. Everything is moving again. Bitcoin is down 450 at 64 and change. Ethereum is 34.44 at unchanged. Everything has softened since I looked at about, ooh, I don't know, maybe 6 a.m., 4.30 a.m. too. Eesh. Okay, anyway. So platinum and palladium are both up. Palladium up 18 at 973. Platinum 1019 up 24. Grains, they're probably up. Let me see. Yes, grains are up, though not crazy. Soy is up nine cents at eleven oh seven. Corn is up three cents at three ninety two, and wheat is up nine cents at five forty three. Okay, there are two drivers in the markets right now. There are many drivers in the markets right now, but the two drivers that we're going to talk about today are. Uh, the economy, and we're going to talk about Trump's Trumponomics plan in very cursory overview uh, tone. A lot of people are asking what its implications are, and there are many knock-on implications for this if it were to happen, if it were to happen, uh, and the markets are moving because of this. Uh, just as a quick aside, during... Uh, during conventions, Republic, Democrat, whoever the perceived winner is, uh, usually will have a pronounced effect on markets. It's not obvious which way, but people will gyrate. Tax laws might be changed, so people start moving things around, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but let's try and stay on topic here. All right, premium. We're going to have Trump's economic platform uh, spelled out in premium today. Uh Trump's Trumponomics 2.0 is why gold took off, at least partly. That's why the U.S. bought it yesterday. Kind of like the uh, the American uh, investing public woke up. Here's our front page. We're going to go through this post, which details the uh, the action today. Yesterday, I should say, short seller grip loosens while the fist has basically broken. Basically. All right, so let's go through that. Who bought it? Why did they buy it? What else? All right. Today saw gold breach new all-time highs and finished the day without giving much back. In fact, it gave nothing back and settled at those new all-time highs. Here is the bottom line recap. First, we would draw your attention to how high gold got in percentage terms. It was up 2%, but not over 2%. Historically, you understand that that's a line in the sand. Who bought it? Gold was bought by funds, both American and overseas. It was bought by Bullion Banks covering shorts based on information and experience that I have. Bullion Banks will also sell silver to keep gold in line while they buy gold as needed. We know this. That's my opinion, but we know this. Why? Well, why would gold rally? What other markets moved around? Well, bonds rallied somewhat, but not enough to pop gold 2%. The dollar was unchanged on the day. It rallied earlier on and gave back most of those gains later on. Gold was bought in Europe 
and then bought aggressively in the U.S. This is where the LBMA intersected with um, with the data that came out that was uh, not bullish for rate cuts. Let's put it that way. Silver was used overnight during Europe to keep gold in line all night. My opinion, I have no proof of that. Uh, and this is the U.S. stepping in to buy silver, and it's just succumbed to that as the day went on. The U.S. investor is starting to pay attention to silver. So if if the markets didn't really move, then why did they buy it? Well, gold has seriously become a discounter of future events in gold in bond and dollar terms. The correlation is flipping. Simply put, the gold market is not reacting to bond data or dollar data. The gold market is predicting future behavior for bonds and dollars. It's a smaller market. Uh, it's also been performing very well lately. So if you're thinking about gold, you're putting your money in gold uh, in anticipation of economic effects that are coming down the road. Specifically yesterday, Trump's uh, model, Trump's plan. Uh, we have two broadcasts on the gold bond relationship that we would strongly recommend you listen to if you're premium. Uh, if you're not, then you should be premium at this point in the game. Uh, what else? Well, this is basically a very cursory version of what I want to talk about now. So you can read that if you want. It's basically about Trump's policies and the perceived changes coming down the pipeline. So why don't we get right to that? All right. Backtracking a second. Stocks. The stock market is bifurcating. Okay. So you had big tech rallying and you had small caps underwater. Over the last week or two, consistent with what Hartnett said to look for is big tech is being sold and small caps are being bought. Now, this is triggered by a perception that the Fed will lower interest rates. Lowering interest rates makes smaller companies more competitive against bigger companies, period. So stock portfolio managers and investors will take their profits in big companies and put them in smaller companies. That's, that's, that's very common. The reason it's ripping so much, meaning the smaller companies are really ripping now, is because there is an a lopsided short open interest of speculative guys that have been long tech and short small. So you're having small companies. So you're having a whipsaw effect from that. Now that's why things are happening the way they are. You have an economic change in monetary policy from monetary policy, which changes perception of the company's performance and earnings. One of two things happens now. Okay. There's always a third thing, but one of two things happens now. Either the market broadens, this is the bullish comment, uh, stocks, the rally starts to broaden, meaning all the stocks start to go up. So net-net, all the stocks go up, even though the big tech stocks come off a little bit. That's the bullish scenario. The bearish scenario is the 1987 scenario, where all the money coming out of the big small company, the I'm sorry, the big companies, goes into the smaller companies, but the money says, you know what? Out of every dollar I'm taking out of my profits, I'm going to keep 80 cents. And they only put 20 cents into the small companies. And what you end up having is, is while there's the equal amount of shares being bought as there, as there are being sold, you have a lot less money staying in the stock market. So it's kind of like if you're reallocating from big shares to small shares, are you reallocating based on money? I took a billion out of there. I'm going to put a billion in there. Or are you reallocating based on shares? I sold one share there. That's $1,000. And I bought one share there. That's $2. So we are at a point where either the market broadens and we go higher, right? We're seeking new leadership or, or we roll over and dive. Okay? So that's, that's the, the mechanics of what's going on right now and the economics behind it. And it will continue even in a sell-off. And it will continue even in a rally. The question is, is more money going in, staying in, is more money coming out? And that's the, that's the bottom line there, all right? So I wanted to get that out of the way before I move on. Stocks are important right now. Everyone has stocks, and this is what's going on in the marketplace right now, which, by the way, was handicapped by Hartnett 
over the last, say, oh, four weeks. And we talked about it extensively last week. You're all prepared for it if you uh, are subscribers. Okay, Trumponomics 2.0. There are many, many levels. I mean, I wrote so much that I shouldn't even be getting into right now. But I'm going to try and boil it down and then give you something that you can read uh, attached to this. Donald Trump had an interview with Bloomberg, and the interview was basically an outline of his Trumponomics concept. Trumponomics 2.0 is what they're calling it. And, uh, well, why don't I just read what I have here? The bottom lines for the economics of what he's talking about is, one, mercantilism. Sound money, high tariffs, and less financialization. We'll talk about what it means in a second. Classic corporatism, not banks, businesses that create and innovate and do. Call it a competitive deregulation as well. So he's not interested in banks earning interest off of your money, off of your business. He's interested in businesses uh, uh, innovating. So there's a libertarian aspect to that. Uh, it's actually more pro-union than it is pro-government. Protectionist tariffs. Lower tax rates for businesses, classic corporatism, and higher tax rates for imports. Now, this is a tax on other economies selling stuff to us. Okay, it essentially becomes a consumption tax. The more you spend, the more you spend. The more you buy, the more you spend. This type of a protectionist tariff was created not just to fight off against uh, other countries that are unfair in their trade practices. It was created during the Revolutionary War, after the Revolutionary War, to protect the economy and let it start to make things. You have to buy American. He's saying buy American without saying it. Now, there's a lot of effects to that, but that's what that is. Lower business tax. I just mentioned that. That's to attract companies here. It's the opposite of what Germany's doing, where they're letting them all go to um, uh, uh, China. All right. Bottom lines for markets. There's nuance here, but I'm giving you bottom lines. This is inflationary at first. This is predictive of a weaker dollar for an extended period of time. Mercantilism, you want to export, weaker dollar helps you export. This creates higher commodities, higher raw prices. It's bullish for stocks down the road. It's bearish but gyrating for bonds. The long bond may go down, the short bond may go up, okay? It messes with the yield curve. Most people think the yield curve will steepen, and that means the back ends will yield more and the front ends will yield less. So you have a steeper yield curve or an uninversion, and that's true, but what they don't know is they, oh, inversion, inversion, I mean, like steepening, steepening. Well, is it a steepening because the fronts go down or which is bullish, or because the backs go up yield-wise, which is bearish? Well, the answer is it's both. Both will happen. The yield curve will do this, like a seesaw. It is bullish gold for many reasons. One of the reasons is he's considering implementing a gold standard. Will that happen? Probably not, but I'm not throwing water on it because just talking about it makes gold go higher because you need to have gold, because even if we don't go on a gold standard, there's going to be less fiscal nonsense. All right, so some notes I wrote for you. Trump outlined the core tenets of Trumponomics in an interview with Bloomberg. Key highlights, putting a little meat on the bone here. Sanctions and tariffs. Despite his dislike for sanctions, Trump plans to enforce extensive bilateral sanctions and draw inspiration from William McKinley's tariff policies to generate revenue all right look at history we historically have had high tariffs going down so tariffs coming in is a reduction in protectionism which is an increase in globalism and those spikes are when we've had to protect ourselves now what's not on the screen is going back to the american revolution all right here's what tariffs did for us as a country then forget about this you know these are wars and stuff like that 
Forget about that bullshit. Okay? When we broke ties with England, we were a country rich in natural resources, but dependent on external finished goods. I've got trees. I don't have tables, right? So you had to sell your wood to England and they would manufacture a table and sell it back to you. So what the United States did to become self-sufficient is develop domestic manufacturing. And it did that by saying to its citizens, sure, you can buy an English table, 200% markup. And the American citizen said, shit, I'll buy American. And the American innovator said, shit, I'll make the tables in America. And that's how the econo the manufacturing economy was born, through protectionism. And there are many negatives in abusive hands to this. But the bottom line is protectionism, which is part of mercantilism, encourages domestic industry to grow, manufacturing industry. And that manufacturing industry then, with a weaker dollar, gets to sell things overseas. So if you're in business right now, you want to be an exporter uh, over the next five years, not an importer, right? Over the last 20 years, you want it to be an importer, not an exporter. And this is how the economy is going to flip uh, as we're going to be looking to sell. Businesses will be subsidized. There's a lot more on this, but let me just go on to the next point. Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell will be allowed to complete his term as chair ending in May, 2026. Okay, so... Of course, he'll be allowed. I don't think he can fire him. He can ask him to step down, but I don't think he can fire him. But the reality of it is, Powell is going to be perceived as someone who doesn't want to ease rates. And I'm giving you my two cents on this. If Trump's plans are implemented, Powell will have to lower rates. Have to. He may quit. But there you have it. Also, if you go back on a gold standard or a pseudo gold standard or a semi gold standard, or if you monetize gold through assets, Powell will have to ease rates to counterbalance some of that stabilizing but deflationary effect. Corporate tax. Trump intends to lower the corporate tax to 15%. The left will tell you this is bad and they have points. The right will tell you this is the practical right. This is the Trump right. This is like, Dude, they're not paying taxes anyway. See, if you lower taxes to 15%, all that money that Apple is holding offshore to avoid paying taxes will come back. So if you lower corporate taxes and cut individual deals with companies that you care about the most, they will bring money back and invest in America. That's the concept behind the corporate tax rate. The problem with that is it will, in the short term, it will reduce fiscal tax revenues. And if fiscal tax revenues come in, that's bad for bonds, okay? TikTok, he no longer plans to ban TikTok. Why is that important? I don't know, but Bloomberg seemed to think it was important. So I put it in there. He's not interested in, he's not interested in being friends with China. He is, however, interested in business that he can, um, leverage. Secretary of Treasury, Jamie Dimon is considered for the role of Secretary of Treasury. That is what it is. Foreign policy, consistent with mercantilism, consistent with protectionism, consistent with America first type of stuff. Trump is ambivalent about protecting Taiwan from China and punishing Russia for the Ukraine invasion. All right. Uh, Geopolitically, the United States is already reducing its footprint. These are not things that are new. These are things that were talked about in 16. We're going to spend less in NATO. NATO people have to spend more. We're going to pull out of uh, our, some of our bases. Uh, we're going to get out of the Middle East. See, Trump started this stuff, and Biden continued it. He just didn't brag about it. Trump is bragging about it, right? So Trump is going to basically pull out of these nations the, the 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 footprint of the U.S. is going to recede in the Far East, and he's ostensibly going to give concede these areas back to China. There's there's a flip side to that. One of the flip sides is, and I think this is actually quite important. It's not discussed yet. Is that if you're a nation or a region of the world, let's call it Europe, and you've benefited from NATO, meaning we've spent five to ten percent on our budget militarily, in part, 
to arm and protect Europe. Now, that makes us a bully. It also makes us a policeman. Okay. See, the money that these nations in Europe are not spending on defense, they're spending on the social welfare net. So everyone has free college. I'm exaggerating. They have a more generous healthcare system. They they have money to spend on it because their percentage of GDP is under 3% for military. That's going to change all over the world. Japan's going to make its own defense. Europe's going to make its own defense. And that's going to hurt their economies uh, uh, in a way that they're not prepared for. All right. Trump believes he now better understands the levers of power and the importance of selecting the right personnel. He's projecting that it's not just about loyalty, it's about expertise. Very Reagan turn there. His policies focus on tax cuts, more oil production, which we were doing anyway, Biden just can't advertise it, deregulation, higher tariffs, and fewer foreign commitments aimed at appealing to swing state voters. Okay, the higher tariffs part, I want to bring up to you as well. Higher tariffs is uh, uh, supposed to offset the lower income tax or lower corporate tax. And it does potentially down the road, but at first it will not because people will spend less money. They'll say, shit, I'm not going to buy that. They won't be used to it, the sticker shock, right? Meanwhile, corporations will stop uh, paying taxes. All right, energy. Trump's approach to inflation includes increasing oil and gas drilling. We're drilled, baby, drill. This has to happen while we're developing. You drill for oil while you're developing more efficient nuclear, which he believes will lower prices despite the potential inflationary impact of tariffs. He also emphasizes harsh immigration restrictions to boost domestic wages. That might be why oil sold off. Okay. Doesn't necessarily mean it's bearish for oil, but it does mean that OPEC is in trouble. If we're going to start drilling for more oil, we start drilling in Anwar, oil prices can collapse. Tariffs, not taxes. Everybody touched on this. Regarding the budget deficit, Trump's tax cuts and protectionist policies are expected to exacerbate the national debt. That's what I just said. However, his other policies may attract business leaders, right? So we're going to lower taxes for corporations, and we're going to make up for that shortfall in tax revenue by raising protectionist tariffs. So we need people to keep buying stuff, but we're going to take that money at the cash register. It's like a sales tax, all right? Uh, and corporate corporations are going to have lower taxes. The idea is, uh, number one, your corporations will keep prices lower because they're uh, – uh, they have less tax risk. You know how that goes, right? Uh, but it also encourages foreign companies to come here, right? So, you know, if your if your business policies are friendly while Europe's companies are just thrown up in the air and they're like, where do we go? There's no business here. Do we go to China? Well, he's saying, come to the U.S. We have a friendly policy here. And that's true, right? Cutting bait with externalities and pay for play. I think I just touched on this. Trump's proposed economic agenda includes maintaining tariffs, potentially increasing them. They'll be increased. And reconsidering U.S. commitment to defending Taiwan. He, is, he has a favorable stance towards Saudi Arabia, citing personal relationships. Okay, this is the heart of corporatism. I want to just I want to just give you like one of the things of corporatism. Corporatism is deregulate market-based deregulation so he says to the u.s he's not he's not he says to the u.s we're going to drill for more oil energy costs will drop opec says collectively opec says oh shit oil prices are going to go down right but he likes saudi arabia so because of the personal negotiation, the individual negotiation, he cuts a deal with Saudi Arabia. He'll support them. Oil prices are going down, like it or not. But Saudi Arabia, we're going to hook you up, whatever. So the concept is basically free market regulation uh, at, for oil, free like you know, a freer market, but subsidy deals negotiated one at a time. He's a deal maker, okay? So he's going to basically say, all right, we're going to lower taxes for everyone, and then we're going to raise taxes on those individuals we don't like, meaning businesses that aren't helping us. 
So it's about, it's a lot of it is about his judgment and the people around him. It's not some big state concept. Okay. Um, conversely, we're going to, uh, we're going to put protective tariffs on everyone. Anything that comes into the U S it's a 200% tariff, but then he's going to go around and say, Germany, we're going to cut you a side deal because of our relationship. So basically it's carve outs. It's, it's, Big rules and big carve outs. An example of this, you remember 2016, he had a deal negotiated with Apple where he said uh, he would, I forget the specifics of it, but it was lowering taxes or giving them a one time tax abatement uh, in return for hiring more people. Same idea, right? Right. Taxes are higher. I'll give you a break on your taxes. Just don't fire people. So he's basically taking tax money and using it as a tool to help. Uh, or help the economy through protectionism or uh, business itself. All right, moving on. We're going to have that whole report and a little bit more analysis at the bottom. There's the market news. It's all about Trump today. Geopolitics, we'll skip that for now. DNC, RNC convention, we know about that. That's it. Okay, so that's it. So why did gold rally? Well, gold rallied because America bought it. Uh, and America bought it because of the Trumponomics uh, concepts. You know, it sunk in. Uh, and the RNC convention made that clear. And it probably, you know, you probably say you're sitting in China and you're like, oh, shit. They might actually do this. And so you're like, all right, I guess I'll buy more gold. Uh, or I'll buy my gold now. They're all buying gold. They're just rushing to buy it now because of that. Now, uh, uh, not throwing water on it, but the, these conventions and the news that comes out of them, the promises are never kept, at least in full. I do believe these, like, for example, 60% tariff on China, that's a flex. That's a flex, right? That's the, that's the stick. The carrot is we'll leave Taiwan alone. Boom, there's your negotiation. You want the tariffs lower? Then back off on Taiwan. That type of, that type of stuff. And it all comes down to the actual deal that's made. Some people think that, you know, Trump makes a lot of great deals. Some people think that Trump makes a lot of mediocre deals or great deals on paper that the other side weasels out of. Uh, certainly after the headline is out there, Apple fired those people. Anyway, you follow me? It works both ways. The other thing you could say is that regardless of what happens, if these policies are successful or not, and I believe that they will be successful if given a chance, you're going to have a weaker dollar. If he's wrong and it doesn't work, you have a weaker dollar, right? Because people will pull their money out of our bonds. If he's right and these policies work, you will have a weaker dollar because we need to export goods with a weaker dollar in order to support domestic business. Weaker dollar if you win, weaker dollar if you lose. That's the bottom line. Okay? Have a great day. I'm Vince.